With so many making a New Year's resolution to learn more about machine learning and AI stuff, I thought I would let you know the only way that ever works. Everybody wants to go straight for the latest and greatest, but please don't. Follow these steps instead. In this video, we'll cover where you should start, how to think about learning in the context of ML, and how AI can help you learn about AI. But first, who am I? I'm a former Meta staff engineer who also worked at Twitter and Adobe. I have over 14 years of experience in tech. And today I spend my time coaching machine learning engineers through every step of their career. If that's interesting to you, please subscribe. So area, area, what course do I take? Okay, that's an interesting question and one that everybody comes to me with. But can I ask you a question first? I have this fun time series analysis book. And look, there's this page. And there's this page. Which one should you start with in order to learn time series analysis? While your heuristic would be to start with the earliest page in the book, sometimes that's actually not true. But I venture to guess that you do not have sufficient context just by me pulling random pages out of a book to know which one pertains to your situation better. Maybe if it had a heading on it or something, that would be easier. But you don't have headings. You're going into a new field. It's exciting, but also you do not know what you do not know. So how do you find context? Well. Let's start with a real world problem, something that you have. What problem do you have in your life that ML can help you solve? And guess what? There's probably a tutorial about this already. So you can start with that tutorial and see maybe just one or two things where your problem is different from that tutorial. If you don't know Python, chances are this is something you're going to le learn through this tutorial as well. How do you pick it up? Well, it's actually a very easy language to read through, but you need to understand what you're reading. So if you see in a tutorial words like import numpy, you need to understand what both of those words mean. For import, you can likely go into the Python documentation itself. Yes, you need to be very comfortable with the docs. This is where we spend a lot of our time. And numpy, you will soon find out that that's a third party library that has a whole bunch of documentation of its own. You don't need to go into that rabbit hole right now. Just understand what numpy is when it appears in your tutorial. Through this, you will learn Python, and then you will learn third-party libraries like NumPy. But of course, a lot of machine learning today is done on GPU, and I would recommend that you do as much on GPU as possible just to save your own time. So how do you find GPUs? They're expensive. Well, Google Colab actually makes it super easy for anybody to get a basic GPU. Yes, they're not perfect. You're not gonna train the next GPT on it, but for your purposes right now, this is exactly what you need. So sign up for a free Colab account with Google. And no, I am not sponsored. Another caution I will give you is to not be tempted by copy pasting or worse yet, cloning the entire Git repository onto your machine and then just changing a few things. I want you to type in every character, including the config by yourself. And I want you to understand what you're typing. This is the learning part of this you need to have your fingers on the keyboard. After completing this first project, you will have lots of questions. There will be lots of things that you do not yet understand. And for those, I recommend taking Andrew Ng's course, link in the description. Beyond that, if you want to go into deep learning, I really, really recommend taking the deep learning specialization on Coursera. Again, not sponsored, just a fan. Get comfortable being uncomfortable. Earlier this year, my family went to Denmark. It was awesome. We saw where Lego was from. But in order to drive there from Copenhagen, you have to go through quite a bit of road. And on those roads are signs. There are signs everywhere, but I can't read them. I don't know Danish. And so aside from my kids thinking that it was hilarious that the Danish word for speed is fart, I wasn't able to get very much from those signs. You are in this very same situation. The information is there, it's written, it's in front of you, but you may not know what it means. And this is where ChatGPT and similar tools come to help you. I recommend using these tools to ask specific questions. For example, what is a holdout set? Why is it important? These tools are incredible at answering these questions, but do not, no matter what you do, copy code that they produce. I find that for a beginner, finding bugs in the AI code is very, very difficult. Remember earlier when I told you that I've been in the industry for 14 years? You might look at me and say, well, he learned everything 14 years ago, so easy for him to talk. He probably doesn't need to worry about things like this. Would you be surprised to know that I learned machine learning at least four times? When I was in my master's program, my master's thesis was on a subject in computer vision that I solved entirely with techniques that did not involve any deep learning at all. 
The year after I graduated, convolutional neural nets were the only technique that anybody would use for that problem. Yes, I became irrelevant the moment I graduated. And I've become irrelevant many, many times since. The project-based approach I outlined here helped me throughout my career, not just once when I got in. You'll experience these paradigm shifts too. So get comfortable learning. Also, don't worry too much about mathematics. People often freak out about it, but here are the concepts that you really need to know in math in order to be fairly comfortable in machine learning. They're all pretty simple to pick up. Derivatives, integrals, optimizations, so finding mins and max, matrices, dot product, cross product. And if you don't understand any of the words that I just said, type them into ChatGPT. It'll teach you. Yes, there's plenty more math that you can learn, but I urge you to focus on fundamentals of the machine learning. If there is a domain that you're extremely new to and none of the fundamentals carry you through, I recommend looking at a PhD dissertation. Those works usually have an extensive introduction section that will introduce you to the entire field. If you pick a recent one, you will not miss very much. And when you're ready for machine learning to become something more than just a hobby, when you're ready for it to become a job, watch this video about all the different interviews that machine learning engineers are subjected to.